Welcome to LK Nomenclature! This video is going to be problem focused and not include any of that quantum physics orbital mumbo jumbo. I broke down the process into three easy steps and then review problems to show you how they are applied. By the end of this video, you will be able to name some complex alkane chains. Organic chemistry is painfully boring and tedious, so I'll try to keep it interesting as best I can. So let's do it. Three easy steps for naming alkane chains. Step 1. Find the parent chain. When you're looking at a molecule, pick out the longest, continuous, uninterrupted chain of carbons, even if the molecule is all twisty-turny. The chain is called the parent chain. The name of the parent chain depends on how many carbons there are in the chain. So write that name down, uh, the name of the parent chain, and that name comes at the end of the name of the whole molecule. If your longest chain has X number of carbons, look at the table, then name thusly. So if you just have one carbon hanging out, that carbon is methane. If you have two carbon, it's ethane, and so on. I use the acronym MEPI to remember the first four, and then between five and ten, it's the same numbers you've been using since the dawn of your science learns. And just a note, remember that seven is, hex, is a heptane and not septane. I see a lot of students do this. It's heptane for seven. So MEPI for methane, ethane, propane, butane, MEPB, MEPB, kind of works. So here I put two examples. Here's methane and here's propane. Here methane only has one carbon hanging out. And here on propane you have three. One, two, three, MEP, protein, uh, propane. Blah. Step two, identify the baby chains. You need to identify the substituent groups that are attached to the parent chain. A substituent group is everything that is not the parent chain. Think of these as your baby chains. You then name the same way as the parent chains, only you call them aisles instead of anes. So if you have a single carbon hanging off, that would be a methyl group. Uh, two carbons would be an ethyl group instead of like an ethane. So you list these subgroups in alphabetical order, and you don't count the Greek numbers that are used to keep how many subgroups there are. So if there are two methyls, you will list it as two dimethyl, and that di won't count when making that last name. And you'll see how this applies when we do problems in just a second. And step three, number every carbon in the chain. You want to level label the number one carbon in a place that gives the lowest number address of the subgroup at the first branching, and every other branch. So in other words, start counting from the closest subgroup. There are a lot of nuances to this, as sometimes there will be branches on the first carbon. The address of the carbons are called locants. I don't know if that's important or not. Numbers are separated from each other by commas, and numbers are separated from words by hyphens. I know, I know, this is all sounding crazy when you listen to the theory and the rules, but after a few problems, you'll see it all come together. So here is our first example. I kept it simple and I listed the rules. So identify the parent chain and number it, identify the subgroups, and then name it. So this first one here is called 2,2-dimethylbutane. Now you want to start labeling from this carbon right here as your number one, because then your subgroups are on the carbon two, which would give you the lowest address for your subgroups. If you start from this carbon here, it would be one, two, three. So that gives you the right and well not the right answer but the right direction to count from number from this side so that you have your subgroups at two if you have two subgroups on the same one you just list the number twice with a comma separating the number so this is two two dimethylbutane because you have your second carbon here and then you have two methyls oftentimes it may help you out to look at the name of the molecule and go backwards. You will get problems where it's just the name and you'll have to draw it. So if you go backwards, let me switch colors here, do this in red. If you go backwards and look at the name, you'll start with butane, so M-E-P-B, you know it's a four carbon chain. And then moving one step further, dimethyl, you know that there's two methyl groups. And then 2,2, two, two. you know both those methyl groups are on the second carbon. So you can think of it that way as well, looking backwards. So again, keep the baby chains alphabetized and ignore the Greek prefixes used to count how many there are with the same name. If there are multiple groups of the same baby chain, then only then do you mind the Greek counters. So let's move on to another example. 
Here you have 4-methyl-3-ethyl-octane. So again, identify the parent chain and number it. Again, on this side, you're going to start counting from the 1 on this side, because that gives your first locant as a 3 and your second as a 4. If you count from this other side, you would have 1, 2, 3, 4, and then this would be 5 and 6 instead of 3 and 4. Again, you want to keep those numbers low for each address for each position. So you're going to number from the left, and you end up with a 3, 4. So then you identify the chains. On carbon 3, you have a methyl group. Methyl, because it's one carbon. And on carbon 4, you have an ethyl group. Ethyl, because it's two carbons. And again, you name them alphabetically. So this is going to be named 4-ethyl-3-methyl-octane. And you can clearly see why it's an octane, because it has eight carbons, and that's your longest chain. Here are some examples. These are just names. I didn't draw these out. But just so you can see how the names go, here you have 4-ethyl-3-dimethyl-octane. Since it's ethyl-methyl, and you don't count these Greek letters, so you can, even though you need to put it in there, E comes before M. Uh, you should know the alphabet by now. Secbutyl and tertbutyl. Here's one where when you're counting the exact same group, then the counters matter. So if you're counting a bunch of methyls or a bunch of ethyls and they're all ethyls, then, then these matter. So here is secbutyl would come before tertbutyl. So this was like 2 secbutyl and then maybe, I don't know, this was 4 tertbutyl. Sec would come before tert because S comes before T. So moving on, here's some real problems. Now in 2,2-dimethylbutane, we already looked at this and we label from the left because it's the closest subgroup. Moving on to 2,3-dimethylbutane, lost my cursor here. Oh, here it is, this guy right here. Here we, you can count from either side, and either way you count it, it's going to be a 2,3. And notice the comma separating the numbers from each other, and the hyphen separating the numbers from the word. So it's 2, comma, 3, hyphen, dimethylbutane. And now this is, this sort of has a plane of symmetry, you can, I don't know, maybe not. But you can see that it doesn't matter if you count from either side, you'll have a 2,3. So moving on... Next, this one you can label from the first carbon, from the one that's hanging on the bottom right side. If you label across the middle chain, you'll also come up with a similar answer, since they both give you the first subgroup at the second carbon. And you can make a chart as you go for these bigger molecules to help you keep track. So if you label from here as, as your 1, you'll have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So on your 2 right here, hanging on carbon 2, if this was a bond, you would have C2 methyl, on C4 you have a methyl, on C5 you have an ethyl, etc. So you can make a little chart here like that, like I do just to keep track, and then name it. So this would be 5 ethyl and then 246 trimethyl octane, because on 2, 4, and 6 you have methyl groups. So again, reading that backwards, octane you have 8 carbons, trimethyl you have 3 methyl groups that are attached to number 2, 4, and 6 carbons, then you have an ethyl group attached to the 5th carbon. So let's look at a skeletal structure, because you'll see a lot of these that you have to name as well. And for skeletal structures or formulas, Again, you want to number your carbons from the, from the spot closest to the first branch. So remember that you want to number each location and have the smallest possible number. In this case, if you number with the one on the right, it will give you a 22667, and the other way gives you a 23377 name, which is ugly. So ask yourself, which way gives me the smallest numbers? So you want the 22667 because the second position here is a 2, and the second position here is a 3, so you want to go with the 2 because that's a smaller number for the second position. So naming here, you see you have a 1, 2, and then hanging off this 2 or 2 methyl groups, 3, 4, 5, 6, hanging off the 6 or 2 methyl groups, and then the 7 is another methyl group. So 2, 2, 6, 6, 7, try, no, so 2, 2, 6, 6, 7, penta methyl octane, since there's 5 methyl groups. Because uh, you have the 4 methyl groups hanging out, off the parent chain, and you don't count the CH3 carbons on the end of the parent chain if you see it in in a formula. So number from the right. And looking at, I think it's our last one. Nope, two more. Uh, f this one is for isopropyl 4-methyl-octane. And this one you're going to number from the left, 
from this side for obvious reasons. If you count from this side, you have one, two, this one's three, and this one's four. If you count from the right side, you'll have one, two, three, four, and then that one's five. So that would give you lo the lowest number for the location of the first group. So you're going to number from the left. And six, seven, eight, nine, well, eight. So you have eight carbons here. Four, five, six, seven, eight carbons. And four iso comes before meth because I comes before M. And if you have uh, CH, CH3X, it's this little formula down here. You're going to see a CH with, a, with CH3s attached, and then the number of the CHT, the CH3 is going to vary, that methyl group. You'll begin to recognize these quickly as isopropyl or secbutyl, etc., as the chains get more complex. But for now, just focus on the, uh, focus on the main rules of numbering. That's not as important as you get, as you get further along. Uh, so here is your ethyl, isopropyl rather, MEP, three carbons, and then here is your methyl, so four isopropyl, four methyl octane. And then coming down here is a much more complex one. So if you name across the central string, you have nine carbons. If you name from the bottom right, you're going to have ten carbons, and I numbered them in yellow. And this is the parent chain, so that means that carbon two has a methyl on it. Let me do this in a different color. Uh, oh, it's not working. Thank you, one note. Okay, so here is a methyl group hanging off of carbon 2. And so there's 2, 3, 4. So then all of this is hanging off in number 4. This is on carbon 6, which is simple, and this is on carbon 8, which is simple. So this is 8 ethyl 4 isopropyl 2, 6 dimethyl decane. Now you want to notice that the iso and isopropyl always counts since that's part of the name and it's not a counter. So isopropyl gives a structure and not the number of the same group. So iso always counts rather than the di or tri or whatever it is for how many you have. So hanging off of four is an isopropyl just like we saw before the CH with two CH3s hanging off of it and then two has this methyl hanging off of it. So that's kinda hard to see but it'll get intuitive. So by now you should have some intuition on how to name these molecules and when studying organic every chapter you get to in class will build on the information from the chapter you just covered. So you don't have to get through whole chapters in one session to study OCHEM, it's just study tip. Break it up into small bits like I just did here and then take a break and move on to another one. But be sure to do those small bits every day. And when you review your notes, start from the beginning of your notes and review all your notes every time. And that's all I have for this video. DFTBA.